Do you know what's a linear graph and how is it connected to a linear equation? Why is m called the slope and c called the intercept? And how does changing the value of m and c affect our graph? We will discuss this and much more about linear graphs and linear equation in today's lecture. Hello students, welcome to the first lecture of chapter 2. Today we will be discussing in detail about the linear equations and linear graphs. Graphs are one of my favorite topics. It's fun to learn and it makes us visualize numbers and mathematical problems on a completely different level. I hope you will enjoy today's lecture and learn a lot from it. So let's get started. y is equals to mx plus c is called the general form of a linear equation. It's more specifically also called the slope intercept form. Why is it called the slope intercept form? Because m over here represents the slope and c represents the y intercept. Let's just try to understand what that means. So let me create a graph of an equation. Let's assume y is equals to 2x plus 1. So here I have used the value 2 for m for slope and value 1 for the y-intercept. Y-intercept means the point at which the graph will touch the y-axis. So just notice that I used 1 for my y-intercept and the graph is touching y-axis where it's 1. And slope, slope means how much steep my line is. So 2 represents this much steepness. Let's try another example to understand better uh, what, let us go for 1x plus 1. Now you can see I decreased the slope from 2 to 1. And you can see the new graph, its steepness is less than the previous one. And if I just decrease the steepness even more, if I use 0.5x plus 1, look over here the steepness is decreasing. m is representing the slope. When you decrease the value of m, the slope or the steepness of the line is decreased as it is evident from here. And what is 1 doing over here? The value of c is actually the point where the graph will touch our y-axis. So this is our y-axis. And you can see all the graphs, all the three graphs that we have made so far, they are touching the y-axis exactly where the value of y is 1 over here. So let's just change it from 1 to 2. As I change the value from 1 to 2, the graph moved upwards and now it's touching at 2. Now if I make the other graphs also go at 2, so every other graph will also go at 2. Okay, so this is basically what it represents, uh, what is the meaning of y is equals to mx plus c. Now, let us try to visualize this in a better way. When I'm increasing the value of m, you look over here, the slope is increasing. The higher the value of m, the slope is increasing. And when I bring m closer to 0, look over here, when I bring m very close to 0, you know, the steepness is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. And over right here, just about when m is completely 0, you know, the line is not steep at all. There is no slope. The slope is absolutely 0. It's a horizontal line. So when the value of m is equals to 0, you get a horizontal line. When I change the value of c, it's changing the point at which a graph is touching the y-axis. When I increase the value of c, you know, it's going upwards. When I decrease the value of c, it's going downwards. Okay, if I decrease the value of m towards negative, just notice that the graph is getting steeper but in the opposite direction. So when the slope is positive, the graph goes higher towards the right. When the slope is negative, the graph goes higher towards the left. That's the basic difference between a positive slope and a negative slope. C is called the y-intercept. It's just the point at which the graph is going to intersect with y-axis. Now just notice, when I change the value of v, the slope is not changing. The slope of the graph is not changing. 
you know it's the steepness of the graph is consistent because c does not affect the steepness of the graph the steepness of the graph is only affected by the value of m if i decrease m the steepness is decreased if i increase m the steepness is increased if i make m negative the steepness is going to increase in the other direction if i make m zero the graph is not steep at all it becomes the equation of a horizontal line so this was a small introduction to linear graphs now let's move on to the next topic okay so now we want to learn how to find the slope of a given line for example we have this blue line over here and we want to calculate the slope or the gradient of this line first thing we need to do is to pick up any two points on the line for this example i have picked a point over here where the value of x is minus 1 and y is minus 3 and another point over here where the value of x is 2 and y is 3 you can pick any two points on the line so after picking up the points we're going to use the formula slope represented by m is equals to rise of a run by rise we mean the distance that is traveled along the y-axis so in between the points that we have picked these two points how much distance is traveled along the y-axis how many number of boxes are there along the y-axis so there are six boxes and by run we mean the distance that is traveled between these two points along x-axis so the distance traveled is 3 now the slope is going to be 6 divided by 3 that is equals to 2 we can also find the gradient using the formula that we previously used that is slope is equals to y2 over y1 divided by x2 over x1 to apply this formula we need to give names to these two points so let me call this the point number one so it will be x1 and y1 and let me call this the point number two so this will be x2 and y2 now we're going to put these four values in this formula so after putting the values simplifying them we have got the exact same answer that we found out over here and there is one more thing i can change the names i can call this one my point two and this one my point one so this will be x1 and y1 x2 and y2 and still my answer will be the same so i have calculated again the values were shifted the signs were changed but the overall answer was same so it's totally up to you which points are you going to pick and how you're going to name them it's totally up to you there is no difference in that so the only thing you need to take care about is not to make any mistakes in the calculations okay so i hope that this was very simple and easy to find the slope of a given line so let's move on to the next topic okay so in the final part of today's lecture we're going to talk about the horizontal line and the vertical line so first let's just talk about the horizontal line y is equals to c is the equation for the horizontal line where c can be any constant now let's see what happens when we change the value of c when the value of c is positive our graph is above the x-axis and when the value of c is negative my graph is below the x-axis and as we already know that c also represents the y-intercept it means that c is the point where my graph is going to intersect with the y-axis so right now you can see the value is 3.3 and my graph is intersecting the y-axis at 3.3 if i decrease the value to minus 2.2 you have noticed that my graph is now below the x-axis as the value is negative and again it's intersecting with the y-axis at minus 2.2 the horizontal line is parallel to the x-axis and it only intersects the y-axis so the constant represents the y-intercept now let's talk about the vertical line so this is the equation of the vertical line x is equals to a where a is again a constant 
the vertical line is parallel to the y-axis and the constant over here represents the x-intercept. It means that the value of a tells me the point at which my graph is going to meet the x-axis. If the value of a is negative, the graph will be on the left side of y-axis and if the value of a is positive, my graph will be on the right side of y-axis. These little points are very important for understanding and for objective purpose. I hope that you have enjoyed today's lecture and learned some little concepts from this. Until next time, goodbye, take care.